Hi, folks. Hope you're all doing better than the charter boat owners down in Louisiana today. They are destitute. They've lost their businesses. There is no business. It's gone. No one wants to go out in a charter boat in the Gulf of Mexico off the Louisiana coast. And I can't say I blame them. Can you? So I'm going to uh, read a couple of the headlines here until I can't do it anymore. And I've got something else I want to talk about, too. So let's go down some of the headlines. Let's, let's pep ourselves up today, shall we? Uh, get ready for the summer of oil. It's the end. The apocalypse, Fisherman says. Yeah. Sure is for a lot of people down in the Gulf. Thanks to the lies that BP told regulators to get their licenses. And thanks to the regulators. Especially with the MMS that does the licensing. I'm going to set my timer so I so I don't over overdo my anger time today. Okay, first aid tent set up for oil spill workers on Louisiana's Grand Isle. That's not you know that that's news. That's news when tens of thousands of barrels of oil are gushing into the Gulf. Oh, good. This is the one I want to come back to. Okay. Here's a photo, gal. Okay. Threaten, oil spill threatens Mississippi tourism. Well, I, I guess so. Oh, this is a good one. BP warns of oil spilling training scam. BP is warning the public of oil spill training scams. I think maybe it's because BP wants to be the only one scamming people about the oil right now. But it, it is bad if someone's trying to make money off this shit. I'm... Okay, the Attorney General wants to talk to the other state Attorney Generals to see how much they can, how much money they, they can get or probably can't get from BP. Uh, the robot starts to cut up the pipe as BP tries again to stop the oil flow at spill site, yeah, they, they want to now put another top hat on. I want to puke, I want to scream, I want to yell, a charter captain says. I, I feel for these guys. And, of course, the dollar losses to BP. Like, I give a flying shit how much money BP is losing right now. I don't care about BP's financial situation as long as their last cent from that company goes to cleaning this spill up. So let's go back down to the one I want to talk about. It's the, uh, i got to watch my time, oil spill relief could be two months away with completion of relief wells. Now this the other day, actually, over the weekend, I was thinking, I vaguely remembered an oil spill in the Gulf in the 70s. So I looked it up. And it all sort of came back to me after I looked it up, because it was important at the time, but I'm a typical American that has the attention span of a MTV movie. So I looked it up and found some very interesting facts. So, here's Chuck's oil news for the day. In 1979, and I remember this now, in 1979, the, and I call it the Ike's, the Ike's Talk, one oil spill happened. It might be Ike's Talk, Ike's Talk, or X Talk, one oil spill happened. It happened off the coast of uh, Mexico in the Gulf of Mexico, 
started on June 3rd, 1979. The the wellhead was only in uh, 50 meters of water, so that's about 100, 160, 165 feet. So it started on June 1st, June 3rd, 1979, and it was fine. The flow was finally stopped. Now listen to this. On March 23rd, 1980. So basically, 10, 11 months after a very similar thing happened to it as happened to the Deepwater Horizon. A little bit different, but. Uh, on the average, over the whole 10 months, they were spilling out 20,000 uh, 20, barrels a day. That's an average. It went from 30. Then when they got the first relief, drill, uh, uh, relief well drilled after, you know, four or five months, four months or so, that uh, uh, flow went down to just above 10,000 barrels a day that was leaking. So... An average of 20,000 barrels a day. Four times the amount of, of what BP is saying is spilling right now, still, from this disaster. They used, guess what, as a dispersant, Corexit. And the U.S. government said, don't use it above the 25th North Parallel, meaning in U.S. waters. Because... It was too toxic, and it didn't didn't uh, uh, disperse heavy crude, which was, by the time it got to the U.S. waters, it was starting to be very thick mud crude. Oh, and what did they try to stop the flow? They called it then a sombrero. I kid you not. It was a top hat which failed how many weeks ago now and then they tried a top kill which just failed how many days ago and they put a junk shot in it which we tried I don't know a few days or a week ago all unsuccessful junk shot worked a little bit but basically unsuccessful so they drilled uh, two relief wells, but the flow was not curtailed until three months following the completion of the first well. So basically when they're saying we're looking, uh, a relief well could be two months away with completion of relief, or, or spill relief could be two months away, that's, it's a lie. It's a, it's a falsehood. We're looking for months, looking at months after that. They get the first well in, it's still going to leak. They get the second well in, they may even miss the well the first time. It might take a couple of times to hit that well with the relief wells. So don't, don't count on August this oil stops spilling. To stop spilling, I should say. And, uh... As far as Tony Hayward spouting how they're using technology, like NASA technology to land men on the moon to deal with this, the technology to land men on the moon is 41 years old. The tech, this failed technology to cap a well is 31 years old. It's it's crazy. Yeah, my time's going to run out. It's crazy. You know, I know I'm jumping the gun. We've got to get through this one, this thing, spill first. But really, no more oil. They have the technology to drill at 5,000 feet. They don't have the technology to clean until that technology is in place and ready to go for any kind of a spill. There should be no more drilling in the Gulf of Mexico. Or in my view, anywhere else. Enough ranting for today. I'll talk to you guys.